Hey everyone, from theory to practice, in this video we'll apply some dependency injection to our Angular 2 application. Now to best be able to demonstrate the concept of dependency injection, I'm going to quickly create two components and one service. See you in a second. Okay, what I did here is I created two components, component one and component two. Both are siblings to each other in my app component, which is the root component to both uh, of those components. Um, you can see them here, a um, little bit of styling so that they're clearly separated. Each of those components got a field which we can click to get some random data. Well, at the moment, nothing's happening here, but we will change that soon. And we got a field where we can add new data. Now, what is this data? For that, I created my data service. Here I have just a private property which stores the data. Now, obviously, in a real application, you probably would not store your data in a property of your service. You would get it from another source, of course. But this is about injection, and therefore, that's fine this way. And the data is just an array of strings here. If we call the get random data function or method, which is one of the methods of the service, um, we will well get one random item of this array, uh, which I'm fetching with this expression here where I access the array and then I get a random number between zero and one, multiply this with the length of the array. So now I would get one between zero and three because the length is free. Now, free is obviously not correct. We would not be able to access an index free because we only have the indices um, 0, 1, 2. Therefore, I use, and by the way, we would get decimal numbers if we just had this expression here. Now, therefore, I use the math floor function to round all values down so that I only get values between 0 and, and 2 and those values will be integers which I can use to access my array items. So this is how I return random data and then I have another method where I insert random data and here I just push this data onto this array. So pretty straightforward here. Now let's hook this up here. I want to use this service in both components to well fill this with a little bit of life here. So I'll start in my component one and in my on add item, or let's start with the get data. I just need to add it here, I just saw. So on get data will be the method and let's add this here on get data. Now here, I somehow need to access the server service. Now, as I said, we do this by injecting it. Injection works this way. We use the constructor, constructor of this class and in the parentheses as an argument, we specify all the dependencies we want to have or we need in this class where we are well using this constructor. So therefore, I'm just binding it automatically to a private property that's a little bit of TypeScript syntactical sugar, um, which I will call data service. And I will, and this will be of type data service. Now this is very important. This code here tells Angular 2 this class needs a data service object or an instance of the data service object. If we were to leave out this type here, well, how would Angular know that it is of type data service? Uh, well, it doesn't read it like we humans do, so no chance. So it's very important to specify this type, which will say, okay, I need an instance of this object, please inject it. Now, as I said, this is some TypeScript syntax here where we automatically create and initialize a private property. So could also write data service of type data service and then just uh, do it like this here and then in the constructor access our private property and set it equal to this. So that would be the exact same way of using the shorter version I had there before and to which I will revert now. So this injects the data service, but right now you see our app is not loading correctly. Angular 2 does not know how to create such a data service. It sees that we want it, but it doesn't know how to handle that. 
Therefore, we have to add another metadata to our component here through the providers configuration. This takes an array and here we define all, yeah, basically all the things we want to provide to this component, all the class, all the objects we want to provide. Now here we want to provide our data service and we only have to, yeah, specify the, the name of our class here. And now if I save this, we see it's now working again. So let's try this out by getting some data. And therefore I want to use my data property here, which I'm outputting through string interpolation here. And we'll set it equal to the random data we get from our service. I access my service through this private property we're setting here. So through underscore data service. And there I call the get random data method. Now let me save this and let's hit this button. And as you can see, well, we're getting random items from our list we had there. Cool. Now let's also add something into this list. Therefore, I will hook this app and we'll also call this data service insert item or insert data. And I will pass the data, which I'm passing into my uh, method here. And I'm just referring to the value of this input field, which I'm accessing through my local variable input I set here. Okay, so let me save this. And now this still works. Now let's add some um, milkshakes. I had one. Oh, yeah, there we got it already. Yeah, so it's now in the list. Now let's add a couple more. So we should now get a lot of milkshakes. Yeah, and as you can see, we rarely get anything else. Cool. So. Now let me just copy that code here to my other component. And well, I need the constructor or uh, it's easy, I guess, if I just copy everything here up to the template. So like this. Now, very important, add your import here to data service. You, you had to add it here too, I forgot to mention it very important that you add this import. So now we got our data service here. Now let me rename this to component two. And if I save this, well, we see it works here and it works here. Now, if we enter a lot of milkshakes here, we get, we get a lot of milkshakes here, but down here, we don't get any because that is what I explained in the theory video. We have two sibling components. And in each component, we specify this provider's metadata, which tells Angular 2 to create a new instance of this service, so to say, or of whatever we're injecting here. So we're creating a new instance in this component and a new instance in this component. Therefore, this data property, which we change in our component one, is not the same in component two and therefore we don't get the milkshakes in well your yeah, well, so should say component two here okay so that's that now let's change this let me remove the providers here save this and save it here too so no providers left here now obviously the app is broken right now now let me inject it in my app component and i do this in my bootstrap method here. Well, there's router and HTTP, HTTP providers are not important right now, but I'll leave them there. And here I will add my data service now. So now this is basically the same as using this providers uh, metadata, so to say. So we're setting up our app, our root component with those providers here. Now we're telling our root component how to create this data service. And as you can see, our app is no longer broken. So it seems like Angular 2 is able to now inject it here and here in our second component, even though we're not telling it how to do, how to create such an object in the decorator, in the component decorator. Let's try if it really works. Yeah, it seems to work. Cool. Now what happens if we add milkshakes? And uh, you probably already know it. If I add a lot of milkshakes, well, we obviously get them here but we also get them here because now we have one single instance 
in the root component, which is used by all child components beneath this root com component. And this is how you can play with injection in Angular 2 and how you can, yeah, think about how many uh, instances you need or want and how they should be able to interact with each other. So really, really powerful feature here, very flexible with these with this possibility of choosing if you want one instance or multiple instance and something you will use a lot in your applications. I hope these videos were a bit helpful when it comes to dependency injection and I will see you in the next videos. Bye!